Hey everybody, it's Darla here. I just wanted to take a little bit of your time today to discuss some uh, why I think we should all have a DNA test. I'm just taking a little break from, you know, crafting and stuff. So I thought I'd get on here and kind of chit chat a little bit and what I think about DNA. You know, I, I, I've been doing a lot of my uh, family tree. I've been doing that probably a good 20 plus years uh, research of my own tree. A few years back, I was gifted uh, a DNA kit from my sister. She had taken one and she gifted me one. And we got it done about the same time. Now, stories in my in my family that I passed on to my own kids is that I was a native, we had native ancestors. It didn't uh, seem too far-fetched for me because um, our family's been here since the 13 colonies when they first came over here. With that, and the other little fact was I tan so easily. So there's some kind of uh, uh, skin tone, a darker skin tone in my DNA to allow me to tan easily. And a lot of people mistake me for Italian or, you know, uh, even Spanish. I've been, people thought I was Mexican uh, or Puerto Rican. It, it just depends on what, what environment I'm in. And it's all about my, I guess, my skin tone. When I took the DNA test, like I said, we had the story about uh, Native ancestry. And even though me and my sister sister have been researching the tree for a long time, uh, the clues, you know, the facts that I had out there just didn't add up to any ancestry of Native. I couldn't get any proof, any documents. Uh, I just couldn't find anything. You know, if they were married to a, a Native, nothing. Nothing is out there. I just, it was like a, a dead end. So it was very frustrating. So when we got the DNA test, lo and behold, there's not a single drop of native blood on there. And I used to think, why? Why did my family tell this story and pass it down? And I passed it down, you know? I mean, I don't have no way to verify it until my DNA test, but why? There's a, a Finding Your Roots, it was on PBS. I don't really get it now because I don't have cable, but uh, I'll, I'll put a little description down there. I like the show because it would uh, it was a very good genealogy show. You could learn a lot of uh, tricks on how to find stuff and um, and everything. So I always watched it. And it, they always had, you know, it was somebody you knew. There was either actors, singers, uh, writers, you know, but they were all famous people that they had on the show. And I would say the majority of the of the people that were on there were of African descent. You know, and they're, they have it harder to find any kind of records. So I, I was always learning of how they did find records and, you know, et cetera. I know on there, a lot of times, the African descended person would tell a story that, was told to them that they were of native ancestor ancestors in their tree. They would get the DNA test and no native blood at all. And I'm thinking, why did the why did they feel our families from back then? Why did they feel that they had to say we were native? I I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a reasoning behind it. Or if our our family just really believed it because they were told that and it was passed down and they figured nobody would fit. But there's so many of us. I'm not the only one. If you watch that show, there's so many that uh, thought they had native ancestry from family stories and they and there wasn't. There's not any. Now so that's that was really was like eye opener. I'm like, wow, okay. So, but I do have uh, less than one percent of African blood, and so that goes with my theory. 
I've always believed when they came out with, there was uh, one African woman that we all came from. They call her Eve. And I believe that. I believe the science and I believe that to be true. And for me to have African, uh, even if it's just a, a drop of African blood in there, uh, that proves that to me that I came, we came out of Africa. There's not much because it's really far back. They moved. They moved out of Africa. Well, my people did. They moved out of Africa and went all the way up to, as far as they could go, I guess, to the Netherlands, you know, uh, Sweden, all the way up there where it was cold. Now, they went from a, a hot climate, so they had you know, dark skin. So when you come from a hotter country, your skin is darker to protect you from the rays of the sun. Now we all know what the sun does to you. We all know that. So don't act like uh, I'm, I'm talking crazy here. So we all know that. And you go all the way up north and there's no sun. The people are more uh, pale color because they don't need that. They, they don't need that. They're trying to grab... The, uh, vitamin D from the sun. So they don't have, they don't need that protection. They have red hair and that kind of uh, helps them absorb the D, uh, vitamin D from the sun a little that they get. Now my people came from Africa, went straight up that way and stayed there until the environment changed how they look. And if you don't believe that either, well, I'm not going to explain that. But that's what I believe. They stayed there till the, I believe the environment changes because they, there was no sun. So eventually there, I don't know how long that takes, how many generations. I do know that once they were there, they ended up going over to Scotland via Germany because I have ancestry in Germany. So they, they were there for a bit. And then they went to Scotland. That's my main, uh, that's my number one bloodline is Scotland. I got a little Irish in there, which is right there. I got Wales, which is right there. And I got English, but England, that's right there. And it's kind of funny because my maiden name is English. But all the men married Scottish women. Just about, just about every grandma I have on my dad's side is of Scottish heritage. So, and on my mom's side, her maiden name, uh, you can find that uh, village named after, you know, her na last name is a village in Scotland. <laughs> so, her people came from Scotland, I think is a little Irish over there. And I think that's where a little bit of the German comes through. This is it. And then, you know, from there, they came to America. Now, when you get a DNA test, it's not going to say American. It's going to say a European country, a Far East country, an African country. Th those are the countries that is going to be in your DNA. Whatever stories that was passed down to you, you might write them down and, you know, there might be some truth in them. You know, I think that's why I think everybody should have a DNA test. You know, it doesn't hurt nobody. You could go on Ancestry. You could uh, do your tree. I suggest you do a tree also because the way, uh, way people are going, they want to ban all kinds of history. So, you know, I don't think, I don't want my history banned. This is my history of my, my family. I don't want that banned. I want that to go on to, you know, my great grandkids and stuff, so they they know where they came from. I suggest, you know, to interview, write down uh, all the information you can from your mom, your dad, your grandma, grandpas, your great grandma and grandpas if you still have them, great aunts, aunts and uncles. You know, get those stories, get that information, get get those dates, get those maiden names. I see so many times on uh, death certificates, uh, they didn't even know the maiden name of their mom. Maybe she was married a couple times. They may give the wrong maiden name. Women are very difficult to find in history. And unless you are rich or 
something extraordinary happen, either good or bad. That's the only way women get mentioned pretty much in the history books. And um, so it's hard to find them. So you can imagine if it's hard for me to find my family, for the find the women in my tree, then it, it's like a thousand plus times more harder for a non-white uh, woman to find her, find the women in her tree or a man to find the women in his tree. You can't, you just can't find the women. They're very difficult to find uh, because they thought we were nameless. Even if uh, when a woman gave birth back, way back in the day, it would list um, William, son of James Mayfield or whatever. They didn't even list the mom. They just listed the kid's name and the dad. So they, they didn't think the women were important. They were, you know, they it was hard for them to be in history, you know, to to be noticed, I guess. So I uh, that's why I recommend everybody get a DNA test. While you're waiting for your DNA test, you document all this stuff about you can find. Try to get the birth year, the date, the death year, if they passed on, uh, maybe a marriage year, where they lived. And usually you get that main information for your mom and dad, grandma, grandpa. You can kind of get back a little bit, you know, and get all that information. You get your DNA test. You go on Ancestry. Now, Ancestry is pricey. You know, there were times I didn't pay for it. But they do have an option you could get it for one month. And usually it's not too awfully pricey for one month. And you get it for a month. You go in there and you set up your tree. You got all your notes. And the first thing you do is just set your tree up. Put in all your information that you got as much as you can. You get that in there. It's, I mean, they have it all there for you. So it's very self-explanatory. Mama, daddy, the kids, and then, you know, mom and dad. I always go mom, dad, mom, dad, mom, dad. I don't really go too much into kids unless I'm trying to find something out about the mom and dad. Uh, sometimes if you have the children's names, when they were an adult, they may have their mom living with them or their dad living with them in the senses so then you could kind of find out things uh, there through maybe a child that you couldn't find out looking them up or something. That's the only time I, I go because if not, your tree would be woo, way out there. You know, it's, you know, it's enormous because you, you figure it, every, it multiplies by every four out. Start with mom and dad and then they each have a mom and dad and then they... Each one of them have mom and dad, mom and dad, mom and dad. So that's four sets. And then it goes on as eight. And then, you know, so you, you have a lot of people in your tree once you start going back. But if you get your DNA, get it uh, signed up on Ancestry.com. Put your tree in there. Get all your information in there in 30 days. You may get some hints. Go to those hints and get their hints. Get as much as you can get done in that 30 days. You know, devote yourself. Say, I'm going to devote a month of just doing my uh, genealogy. And do it. One month out of your life. Come home for work. You know, work two or three hours on it. Knock it out. You know, spend some time on it. And then, you know, then you've got this little record already in there. You get really surprised that who you may be connected to. And I think it's very interesting. And I think people would kind of change well, I'm hoping people would change that once they found out what their DNA was and who they were, that they would be more respectful to everybody. I, I'm just tired of hate. I'm just tired of so much hate because of the way we look. That's the first reason. The second reason is of who we believe in as, you know, a religious thing. And we all believe different. But yet, that's the other thing that how we look, which is nothing we can control, and who we believe in as far as religious goes. And that's that's a preference that we, we choose. As human beings, we have a choice to choose who we want to uh, worship. 
And I don't think it should be anybody's business, you know, of that. Well, now it's the sex, you know. And so who you take in your bedroom is the cause of hate. But it, it's just so, it's so sad that we have so much hate in our hearts. So sad. All right. But I'm just going to leave it there. And that's my reasoning why I think we should all have a DNA test. <laughs> all right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye, alligator. Bye.